So now let's look at determining what sample size is appropriate when collecting data for a population parameter confidence interval. So we have this formula given to us here where we're going to take the critical value of Z alpha over 2 and square it, then multiply that with P hat, multiply with Q hat, and the whole thing is divided by the margin of error, which just the margin of error is squared. Um, now, you probably notice that P hat and Q hat are in the formula, but we're trying to figure out how many items to go get to determine P hat and Q hat. Well, the thing is, sometimes there is some past data or somebody's already started a sample, and so that means that there is a P hat that is available. And once you have P hat, you have Q hat, since it's just the complement. In the event that P hat is not given to us, we use 0.5 for P hat, because ultimately, it is the worst case scenario for P hat if it's 0.5, if it's 50%. And when this happens, when we use 0.5, we'll probably get a sample bigger than we need. That's what the sample size formula will tell us, but it's the only thing we have. And if we've decided that P hat is 50%, then P hat times Q hat, the top right portion of the formula, is going to be 0.5 times 0.5, right? 50% right, then 50% wrong, success or failure, however you want to look at it. And when you multiply those out, you get 0 0.025. So where the p hat times q hat was in the top left of the, sorry, top right of the formula, we now have 0.25 to replace it for our generic case when we don't have any preliminary or past data we can use. And again, since we can only sample whole numbers when we go out into the population, then we're going to want to bump whatever our sample size calculates to the next whole number, of course, unless we got a whole number. Um, the key here, though, is that we do not round whatever this formula gives us. And for E, the margin of error, the most we're willing to be off by, we often see that keyword within and we'll be changing our margin of error from a percentage to a decimal. So here is an example. A school administrator wants to conduct a poll in order to estimate the percentage of full-time college students who have credit card debt of $2,000 or more. What sample size should be obtained for this estimate to be within 2.5% with 95, sorry, 94% confidence if a pilot study indicates the percentage is 34%, meaning 34% have that debt of 2,000 or more. Now, as you read the question, you know, we see this 34, sorry, oh my God, 94% confidence. So it's tempting to want to start making that confidence interval. But the question asked, what sample size? So that is the key as to how we're solving this. But the other thing that's really worrying me is, you know, we see two percentages. Hopefully the word within is ringing a bell right now, but I'm most worried about the 94% confidence interval because that's one I don't have memorized. So 94% confidence interval means alpha is 6% or 0.06. Alpha over 2 is to cut that in half and get 0.03. And inside the table, that would lead us to a z-score of negative 1.88, but remember, for the critical value, we always write the positive and write that Z alpha over 2 is positive, 1.88. So P hat is 0.34. That was given to us. A pilot study said the percentage, which is for us P hat because it's a pilot study. It's not the whole population, is 34%. Q hat is to take 1 minus that and get 66% or 0.66. And the question wants us to be within 2.5%, where within is our magic word to mean the margin of error, but since we write as a decimal, E equals 0 0.025. So I determine the formula I want to use, which is the one that has P hat and Q hat, and I plug all the numbers in according to what I found so far, enter it into my calculator, and I suggest you do this too so you know how it works on your calculator. You should be getting 1,268.99.
And as always, we're going to bump that to the nearest whole number of 1,269. That's how many students should be sampled so that we can find out what percent have a um, true proportion of debt of $2,000 or more. Now, we don't expect our sample size of 1,269 to end up being exactly 34%. It probably will be close to that because that's what the pilot study gave us. And we also know that we're making a confidence interval, so we're kind of estimating the true population proportion. But what if they had not done that population pilot study and we didn't have any other prior information to use? Then remember, we're going to use 0.25 for the p hat times q hat multiplication portion of the formula. So where we had times p hat and q hat in the top right, now we're just going to have times 0.25. Again, enter that whole thing in your calculator and see if you get 1,413.76, which we bump to the next whole number of 1,414. And again, remember that because we did not have a prior estimate and we used the worst case scenario of 0.25 for p at times q at, we expected a sample size bigger than had there been a prior study, and it was.